Greetings and welcome to the channel. My name is Dan and in this video we'll be talking about a relatively new method of dating called archaeomagnetic dating, which has recently started being applied to archaeological artefacts and could be a useful tool where carbon dating and other methods aren't a viable option. Study papers and other relevant links will be in the description. Now let's get right into the video. First we need to talk a little about clay tablets, which are ancient inscribed baked bricks of clay. Some of the first clay tablets are thought to be around 10 to 11,000 years old from around 8 to 9,000 BC. And by around 3000 BC, clay tablets were used widely by many cultures over time to write stories, myths, recipes, sketches of animals and plants, receipts for goods, beer tabs, almost anything you can think of that we use paper for in more modern times. But clay tablets don't usually contain any carbon material, so we can't normally carbon date them. We've only managed to date most tablets by knowing the approximate date of a culture where they were found with a varying degree of accuracy depending on the contents of the inscription on the tablets. Well, recently it's been discovered that quite a lot of tablet samples have been found to contain magnetites or iron oxide particles in the clay, which essentially record a magnetic fingerprint of Earth's magnetic field at the time. Earth's magnetic field is always gradually changing, between getting weaker, stronger, the magnetic poles constantly moving, field lines change in directions over time, with the magnetosphere battling the solar wind from the sun constantly. Earth also currently has something that we call the South Atlantic Anomaly, which is a weaker area of magnetic protection and is situated where the inner Van Allen radiation belt comes closest to Earth over a region where there seems to be a huge reservoir of very dense rock inside Earth, called the African Large Low Shear Velocity Province. Since the South Atlantic Anomaly was discovered in the 50s, measurements have shown it to be constantly changing in size and intensity, and as we know now, the Earth's magnetosphere has always been gradually changing and adapting. It would be extremely useful to have a historical map of the properties of Earth's magnetic field through the past for many scientific reasons. Well, there's already been a start to using this process to date ancient artefacts. A study named Exploring Geomagnetic Variations in Ancient Mesopotamia, Archaeomagnetic Study of Inscribed Bricks from the 3rd to the 1st Millennia BCE. This paper, published in 2023, presents 32 high-resolution geomagnetic intensity data points from Mesopotamia. The teams have studied tablets which are well dated based on their association with well-known regional kings, providing well dated and highly precise archaeomagnetic intensity data for the region. This new paleomagnetic research aims to reconstruct the direction and intensity of the geomagnetic field over time, most commonly by the examination of thermoremanent magnetization, or TRM recorded in iron oxide minerals within materials when they are heated to a high temperature and then cooled in a magnetic field. The conditions of Earth's magnetic field at the time of cooling can then be approximated using established scientific techniques, which will study its intensity, direction, and angles of inclination and declination of field lines. The first study that seems to have detected these spikes in magnetic activity in the ancient past was from a paper published in 2009 called Geomagnetic Intensity Spike Recorded in High Resolution Slag Deposit in Southern Jordan, where they obtained data from an archaeometallurgical excavation in the Middle East, designed specifically for archaeomagnetic sampling where they measured 342 specimens from 72 samples collected from a 6-metre mound of well-stratified copper production debris from around 1100 to 800 BC. There is also a study published in 2022 which uses data from volcanic rocks and archaeological artefacts to map the magnetic field around Africa over the last 4,000 years. And with the data they've gathered, they've also been able to map the evolution and movement of the South Atlantic anomaly since around 1100 BC. And this new model of the evolution of the South Atlantic anomaly serves as a valuable archaeomagnetic dating tool especially that the anomaly has been around and changing for thousands of years. Through these studies, it's been discovered that there have been a few spikes in geomagnetic activity over time. Here is an example of the recorded spikes from these studies. This one is known as the Levantine. Levantine?
Levantine. The Levantine Iron Age geomagnetic anomaly, which occurred around 900 BC. The geomagnetic event took place over a few hundred years and also included two other short-lived spikes within that time. You can see the anomaly mapped moving over time, and we now have more concrete data showing that Earth's magnetic field had an anomaly a few thousand years ago as well as in the present, except for being in different regions on Earth. But our magnetosphere has most likely always been going through changing cycles of intensities and what we would call anomalies for as long as it's existed. Reconstructing the behaviour of Earth's magnetic field during archaeological periods is crucial for both achieving a better understanding of the field and related natural phenomena, and for providing a basis to accurately date archaeological materials. The more ways we have to date things, the better and the more accurate we can be. This has exciting potential being a new dating tool, so the more ancient items containing iron oxide particles that can have their magnetic properties mapped, the more accurately we'll be able to use this technique for dating relevant ancient items and cultures. This could be huge for archaeology and ancient history, especially that it allows for another potential method of dating where radiocarbon dating or other established techniques couldn't be performed. And it may urge some archaeologists to revisit sites or re-examine artefacts using this new technique. So what do you think? Well, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Well, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share, and I'll catch you in the next one. I hope you have a great day and take care of yourselves out there.